St. Louis, second oldest town in Missouri, full of history and interesting places, established in 1764 by two Frenchmen on Spanish territory and named after French king. St. Louis was even considered as a capital of USA in 1869. My name is Irek Shalong, and for last 33 years, I live here and work as an artist and art historian. As an immigrant, I am fascinated by this town and happy to see it growing over the years and would like to present my places here to others, thinking mostly about my friends in Europe. I would like to make a few short movies about St. Louis history, art and ar architecture, showing it through my paintings, which I created over those years. Maybe by accident, but I will start my travel through St. Louis from, U from Union Station, big and most busy train station during 30s and 40s in the last century. Union Station was the beginning of new life in America for many immigrants. Unfortunately, I am not a professional movie maker, so please forgive me some weaknesses and do not expect a breathtaking thriller in Hitchcock or Spielberg style. St. Louis Union Station was built in 1894 after the project of engineer Theodore Karl Link. Link was born in Germany in 1850 and emigrated to the United States in 1873. He was trained at the University of Heidelberg and the Col Centrale Paris. His project of St. Louis Union Station was modeled after the fortification of Carcassonne, castle in France. The building was built in very short time only in two years. St. Louis by the end of the 19th century was an in point for all traffic from the west to the east and vice versa. The construction of Union Station was finished in 1894 and first train left St. Louis in September that year. At the same time, it was the most busy train station in the United States. In 1940s, Union Station may left 150 passenger trains a day and 100,000 passengers a day was pretty normal. The sound of a creaking heavy doors welcomes us at the entrance to the spacious Union Station hotel lobby. At the reception of the hotel, we can see big murals painted by American artist Louis Grell in 1942. This three panel painting hang over the Union Station ticket counter until 1980s. Later, disappears for almost 30 years was accidentally rediscovered again in 2014 behind the false wall during the latest renovation of Union Station. Painting was restored in our studio and shown again to the public in 2015. On the occasion of the completion of the painting restoration Commerce by the Landing, an exhibit of my and Louis Grell artworks was organized. The exhibit has been open in October 2015. I mainly presented my artworks from St. Louis. St. Louis architecture is my inspiration. I love urban landscape and paint street scenes with moving cars and evening lights. On September 1st, 1894, Union Station was officially open. The building was meant to be a small city itself. Here is the original photo from the impressive opening night in the Grand Hall. This place 
looks now exactly the same as in 1894. Architect Link, ordered materials from around the nation and the world. Inside and outside the building, Link and Louis Millet, the interior decorator, mix and match the most elegant styles of that time. Marble from Europe, Africa and the United States was used. Tiles from Belgium, England and Spain. The Grand Hall was Moorish in style. West Wing Gothic and dining room rather Viennese style. Above the main entrance from Market Street by a grand staircase we have an allegorical Tiffany glass window. This window designed by Sylvester Annan depicts three female figures representing New York, San Francisco and St. Louis in the center. The archway surrounding the inside of the main entrance on Market Street came to be known as the Whispering Arch because of its acoustic feature. Going west from the Grand Hall, we can see the Gothic Corridor, which is designed in the Tudor Gothic style with an elaborate fan panel ceiling. All waiting rooms were richly decorated and in the ladies' waiting room women could even take a bath for 25 cents. Elaborate finishes were included everywhere, such as green finance brick, scaliola finished walls, gold leaf trim and hand stenciling. Now we are leaving the main building. We will take a short look outside the Union Station. Here is Market Street. It is the main street in St. Louis for parades and public festivals. Very representative, picturesque and lined with important prominent buildings. On the other side of the street in front of Union Station, on Allo Plaza, we have a fountain which was built in 1940. Swedish artist Karl Miles, who came to United States in 1920s, sculpted bronze figures of the meeting of the waters. Nude figures represent two big rivers, Missouri and Mississippi. Now we are driving east on Market Street. On the right side we have a neoclassical building of St. Louis Municipal Courts completed in 1911 and created by Isaac Tyler who was a principal architect of the 1904 World's Fair. Unfortunately the building is vacant for the last 20 years. View of Market Street When we pass the Courts building we will see the statue of Pierre Laclede, a French nobleman who became a fur trader in America. He was a founder of St. Louis in 1764. This bronze statue was created by Romanian sculptor George Zolme and erected in 1914. Father of the artist fight under Polish general Józef Bem during the Hungarian Revolution. Further to the right we have St. Louis City Hall. On the corner of Market Street and Tucker Boulevard we can see the statue of General Grant by Robert Binghorst. St. Louis City Hall, designed in 1890 by George Richard Mann, an American architect. It was modeled 
after the City Hall in Paris, France, and was completed in 1904. The exterior of the building is comprised of Missouri pink granite, pink orange Roman brick, and sandstone. The roof is burgundy red, clay tiles. A poorly executed acid cleaning and years of exposure to coal smoke have left the original pink and orange exterior tarnished. Here how it looks on my painting. On the left side we have civil courts building. The building with a very characteristic pyramid shaped roof was built in 1923. Now we can see a panoramic view of Market Street. Old historic courthouse and gateway arch, a symbol of the westward expansion of the United States in the 19th century. On the left there is a row of parks, City Garden Sculpture Park and Kinner Plaza. City Garden Sculpture Park, opened in July 2009, is home to 24 sculptures, some of which were created by Mimo Paladino, Erwin Wurm, Mark Di Suvero, Kanya Suda. And we have a great large bronze head by Polish artist Igor Mitoraj, Eros Bendato. The sculptures of this artist are inspired by characters of Greek and Roman mythology and are the ornament of many cities around the world. In front of us we have old courthouse building. Construction started in 1816 and was completed in 1864. In 1861 William Rumbold replaced the cupola on the courthouse building. The new dome was modeled on St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. I painted several pictures from this place. The St. Louis metropolitan area, which includes the city and counties, has an estimated population of 2,800,000 residents. It is important to highlight that St. Louis is the place of origin of many famous people, mostly musicians. At the beginning of the 20th century, St. Louis was a place of the rapid development of ragtime and blues. Miles Davis, Chuck Berry, Ike and Tina Turner, Josephine Baker were born in St. Louis. Tennessee Williams grew up in St. Louis. The famous poet T.S. Eliot, a later Nobel Prize winner, was also born in St. Louis. The founder of Pulitzer Journalism Award and founder of St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Joseph Pulitzer, lived here. He emigrated from Hungary to the United States in 1864. We go back the same way. So on the right we have civil court building. The pyramid roof on the top was designed to resemble the mausoleum of Halicarnassus and is topped by two 12-foot high sphinx-like structures with the fleur de lis of St. Louis on the chests. On the right side there is a monumental building of the Soldiers Memorial Museum dedicated by President Roosevelt in 1936 and officially opened to the public on Memorial Day 1938. The building was designed by St. Louis architects in a stripped classical style sculptures created by Walter Hanko. Here is my winter landscape from this place. We pass the Stiefel Theater on the left and end our tour at Union Station.